Okay, so first of all, I'm going to uh, create a, um, a project that we're going to work in. So that's the first thing that we're going to see how to create a project for um, uh, for C and C++ uh, stuff that we have. So uh, we're going to go to Visual Studio. And when it opens, create a new project. Out of new projects, we have to select empty project, C++ empty project. That's what it is. So in, if we scroll up and down somewhere over here, console application is not the one we want. We want empty project, this one. Okay. Um, click over here and click next and select the directory in which you want to have your stuff to be in the, in my case i'm going to put this in my ipc op244 for notes and in here i'm going to create a new directory and i'm going to call ipc144 review and actually let me just create make it that way so let me remove it delete this one and select the folder of the root folder of uh, op 244 ab select the folder now uh, move that and in here i'm going to write ipc 144 make sure you have this one checked because the applications we are creating are very simple this essentially means you want to have several pro projects in a solution this one means you have only one, one uh, uh, project in your solution. So this one, if you don't do this one, it's going to create a directory within a directory, which becomes a headache. So better not to do that. Keep this one checked for now. And uh, probably when you're going to go to parallel programming and things like that, GPU programming, that's when you're going to need to actually use that for. Or system, ana system analysis and design. But not now. So we're going to go create over here. And let me so now it's creating the the uh, solution and, uh, and um, project for me i'm going to right click on the source file i'm going to click on add add a new item and uh, program.c that's a c program or cpp that's c++ program so uh, what i will do over here i'm going to do it in c++ environment but I'm going to write C programs, and therefore we're going to learn a little bit about how to use C and C++ at the same time. So I'm going to click Add over here, and of course include uh, C standard input output because we are using C. And in here I'm going to say um, using namespace std main. Uh, return zero and in here I'm going to say printf hello IPC 144 review and start it run it and that's the ex uh, the um, um, execution everything's good so I have something to start with uh, are we okay down to here All right. Uh, you will see that the poll is going to come up over and over. If you're my student, you're already used to it. If you're not, you please respond to the polls. Um, and so, so I know that everything's OK. Otherwise, I'm going to wait for you to actually uh, either write in the message what you want to say or activate your microphone, hopefully, and tell you what's going on. OK? So um, all right. Okay, so that's that. Let's go back. Now let's bring up uh, the IPC 144 notes and, and take a look at them and one by one go through it and see what we want to talk about. And uh, uh, Because people only said pointers. Um, um, uh, let me actually go like this and go to timeline. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to go quickly go through it and you tell me wh which part you want to hear about and I'm going to explain it to you and go through it one by one 
and if you don't want to talk about it then we'll stop and, and we're going to go further uh, is everybody okay with this format okay and it's uh, imperative uh, that when I actually ask questions because I'm going to say it any problem with this one and you, uh, respond to it uh, on, on your on your um, in your polls so so I know that uh, you want to continue or you have questions over here hardware and software any questions about it CPU memory anything in here you want to know do we have any questions on this I'm just going to go through it like this hardware more than computers memory CPU uh, peripherals memory software that is running the program uh, so um, are we all okay with this okay I'm just gonna so it's gonna be a quick question and I want answers in a chat so um, now um, I might be okay that's very fine I, just, I got it okay guys you're driving please be careful like I'm hearing that you guys are driving and you're doing it that's scary okay so uh, um, hey <laughs> please, please be careful <coughs> so I need uh, uh, so now I'm gonna ask questions about this so um, everybody knows what essentially uh, what a software is and how it works and all this good stuff so um, um, can can anybody tell me what uh, like like quickly discussing this and please be, be quick so we can get over with it quickly uh, when we say a software where does a software sit in mem when it, where does a software s like you have as you see over here you have pro program data and program instructions that they are actually running in 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 your in your application my question is that where do all these things sit in like when you are actually having when you say integer a we know that integer a is in ram but the for loop that you are writing where does it go when how does it execute the the program that you are writing where is it the program gets processed through ram first so yeah so we have to understand that everything goes in ram so the integers that you have the, the arrays that you have and all the things that you have are in ram and also your program is actually running in the ram in the memory of the computer so it's right right adjacent to the variables that you create and um, the only difference like they are all data in the ram no difference the only difference is that your program is the memory in which the CPU is walking through and executing line by line and through those programs in memory you are telling to CPU to go to another place in memory and modify the RAM and come back and therefore your application runs um, we need to know this we need to know that our program is in the RAM too right beside our data everything anything that wants to run it has to get loaded into the memory of your computer and then fetched token by token step by step um, byte by byte by into the CPU so the CPU can run it and execute it so essentially uh, operating systems job is to bring the program into the memory and then starts giving um, the first section of your program to the CPU and sets aside and as of that moment your program takes over and goes through the execution until it ends and when it ends it goes back to operating system are we all okay about this all right so and those people driving please do not respond to my polls thank you driving oh my goodness anyways 
uh, I would say just please just put the audio and listen to what I'm saying and uh, get to where you're going and hopefully you'll be fine anyways so that's that uh, so uh, next uh, information fundamental units memory model address and all those things so uh, bits bytes uh, can anybody tell me what is the difference between a bit and byte can anybody tell me what is the difference between a bit and byte size that's one obviously thank you very much no <laughs> but that's not what it's, I meant. it's um a bit is a one and a zero bytes are a bunch of ones and zeros beautiful so but the perfect explanation for that is that um, like when you are actually if you're in an interview and somebody asks you what is the difference between, between a bit and byte bit is the smallest unit of memory period okay byte is the smallest addressable unit of memory which means you cannot say i want 32 bit 30 second bit in the memory you can't do that to be able to actually go to certain bit in memory you have to jump through hoops you have to go to op345 at the end of op345 we're going to tell you how to do that okay so bits are not accessible directly you cannot just go say i want that i want this where bytes are directly accessible by your program so the smallest addressable unit of memory is a byte that is bunch of eight bits which is essentially one integer that it starts from zero goes up to 255 or starts from minus 128 and goes up to 127 positive and that's what a byte is so do we understand what is the difference between a bit and byte All right, hexadecimals. We know that. Well, now I, I like um, so hexadecimals. Okay. Uh, uh, let me just try and do something in here. Settings. Save. Uh, can somebody send a text message uh, on the chat? I want to see if I hear an audio. Nope, nothing's coming up. There's a setting over there and says give audio and uh, uh, create. I have to I have to see why that doesn't work. Anyways, that uh, well, that would have been nice because I have the chat at left side over here and I don't see it on my screen over here. So. Um, uh, I would like to be able to anyways so um, RAM is a continuous change it's like it's essentially now because we are actually through the things uh, and we kind of know IPC and we are reviewing this um, um, I'm just going to explain to you like what RAM is RAM is essentially one gigantic array of bytes in uh, uh, in the memory now can somebody tell me what is byte how is a byte the size of a byte represented in C language what is a byte a type for a byte that I can access a byte directory no that's four bytes Tyron it's a character thank you character bull Ali really bull seriously all right so character is so that's the, from the response of three people over here and said so we will see that we'll, go, we'll be, be we were in deep trouble over here so your ram your memory is a ginormous uh, array of characters okay it's a ginormous array of characters that it starts from address zero and anybody knows what is the biggest address that you have largest address that you have in memory Nah, so we don't know what an address is. Can somebody tell me what is an address? What does it, when I say address, what does it mean? Natalia, that was smart. <laughs> but uh, I'll explain. So um, can anybody tell me what is an address? Turn on your microphones and talk if you can, because that's too slow. Uh, the chat is too slow, if, if you could. Is it an arrangement of uh, hexadecimal values? Uh, 
you specifically, uh, Amal, was it Amal that actually said that? Yeah. Okay. So you specifically mentioned anything that's in a computer. So, so anything that is in a computer, it's an arrangement of hexadecimal <laughs> values. Let me tell you what another is beautiful thing. Like, that was a very smart thing to say because you can't be wrong. With, what is a program? An arrangement of hexadecimal values. What is a variable? An arrangement of hexadecimal values. What is a computer? An arrangement of... So that's perfectly correct, actually. It's like saying computer is zeros and ones. But an address is the sequence number of those characters in memory. So address is the sequence number of those address of those bo uh, characters in memory so what i told you a character starts the address starts from zero it means the zeroth byte if there is a thing to say and then the eighth byte and then the 52nd byte so when i say 52nd byte 52 becomes the address of that character so remember when we say address it's essentially the sequence number of a byte in memory and that's what an address is, just an unsigned positive integer number. That's what an address is. And how big it is, it depends on the money on your pocket. The bigger your RAM is, the bigger the address you can get into. So depends on how, like when you say 16 gigs of RAM, that's essentially um, um, 16 gigs um, from zero up to 16 gig. That's, that's the size of the memory that you have. And therefore, that will be the... Uh, um, that would be the ad address. So that's that. So that's what the address is. Um, and I'm in here. It kind of tries to explain, but it's a little too uh, uh, like what I would do. I would simply say if uh, if I had like if, so essentially if you have like this if this is your memory that goes starts from the beginning and keeps going one by one so essentially I have like this too and it keeps going sorry for the crude uh, thing I'm using a mouse to draw and let's assume that those are just bytes okay so if I go one by one like this oh god I suck at right but that's that's good so essentially uh, this becomes uh, address zero this becomes address one this becomes address one, this becomes address two, this becomes address three, address four, and it keeps going up to the end of the thing, millions and millions. So that becomes the, uh, the addresses of the, um, um, of the stuff that you have in, in the RAM. So uh, hopefully we are okay with that now. Are we okay? Do we understand what an address is now? All right, now that we know what an address is, I'm going to mention over here a secret for you so you so actually know um, what is the difference between an address and a regular number in, in, in C language. So when you are talking about a regular number, when you're saying integer i, so essentially if I say uh, unsigned integer i, unsigned integer i, I, I can, with what I said, I can hold an address here and I can say what this is the address of uh, the memory that I want to talk about. So what is the difference between a regular integer and an address? When we say an address, why do we uh, actually are making a big fuss about it? The thing is that an address is an intelligent type of address and we're going to come to find how this intelligence work. Um, uh, I have a question. Please, again, activate your microphones and, 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 and talk to me on this. Um, if I'm talking about a byte and I am on byte 40, if I told you what is the address of the next byte, what is the answer? So I am on byte 40. What is the address of the next byte? 41. 41. Perfect. Now, let's say talking about integers. We know an integer is four bytes. An integer size is four bytes. Now let's say I have an integer in the memory and it's on address 40. What is the address of the next integer? 45. 44 actually, because it goes 40, 41, 42, 
43 and 44 becomes the address of the next one okay and if I would say so uh, so if I would say I have a double in the memory and size of a double is 8 bytes and if I say I have a double sitting in, in the address 40 what is the address of the next double 48 it's 48 now let's say in here I have a struct student and a student has an integer uh, a, a double um, GPA an integer student number and an integer semester now if I told you I have a student sitting on the address 40 of the memory what is the address of the next student what would you say B6 56 perfectly correct so that's so that's why addresses are different than regular integers in address adding one to the address means different depending on the size of what's sitting in the memory so if i told you integer address of so i'm going to say 40 is an address of integer go one integer further then you got to make it 44 if i told you go three integer further then you got to make it 52 go 12 bytes further so that's why addresses are kind of strange type of integers because when you add one to them it has checks to see what is it pointing to then it adds the size to go to the next one for one and if you say go 10 more so if i actually have an integer and i would say the address is 40 go 10 integers further it's going to actually go to address 80 because it's going to add four ten fours to it and therefore becomes another 40 bytes going further and it becomes address 80. do we understand what is the difference between an address and a regular integer now and that's what it is that's essentially what it is um and but th i just want you to, to to know that when we are actually going to pointers then it makes everything clear we understand why pointers are what they are and they are, have they are such a big pain in a hee-haw okay so whenever you have a segmentation fault let me just do uh, draw and clear all oh i have a four in here what is this for <laughs> i don't know where it's coming from and it doesn't go away when i <laughs> so that four thingy i don't know anyways let me just see if i there you go now it's gone okay okay so um, whenever you're talking about segmentation fault, like whenever you hear segmentation fault, um, um, or on Windows you're going to see it says illegal operation, uh, something like that. Um, uh, segmentation fault essentially means you loaded your program into the memory and your program starts from address 40 and goes, let's say, to address 140. It's just, just an example segmentation fault means your programs trying to address access addresses less than 40 and more than 140 going out of territory that it has the the address that it's dealing with so if you get out of your own piece of memory that operating system gives to you operating operating system stops you say wait you are touching memories that they don't belong to you you're out of your segment and pooh stops your program that makes the operating system safe and that's why unix is much safer than than windows because on windows you go to the other things if sometimes um it just doesn't detect as good as linux and then we'll be in trouble that's when you see your mouse is not moving as fast and you have to reboot your computer and so on and so forth so are we okay down to here everyone Professor, can you please speak the segmentation fault? Segmentation fault means when you are, your program is in memory and is sitting in its own place. If for any reason, by mistake, when you are writing a program and your program's 
tries to access the piece of memory that doesn't belong to it, compiler stops you and tells you it's segmentation fault. Are we okay? Yes. But how? don't think about how it happens. That comes next. Just okay. know for now that whenever you see segmentation fault, it means I somehow went out of my memory piece. I have to find out how. And later on, we're going to find out how. Okay. All right. So, um, any question about this about languages, C compiler, basic C syntax, and all these good stuff? Any questions? All right. All you need about C language is that C language is written. The only thing that I like in here, I uh, want to tell you about C language is that C language is uh, a language written. Um, Amal, you had a question. No, oh, sorry. I thought I thought you were just asking everyone if that's all clear. Oh, okay. <laughs> so, no, it's it's just good. The only thing that I want to tell you about C language is that C language is a middle-level language, not a high-level language, not a low-level language. A high-level language is a, a language that we human beings can understand properly and we know what does it mean when we actually look at the program and a low-level language is a language that we don't understand it but compiler understands it, uh, but the cpu computer understands it easily and not us those are very fast so that's why you see it says assembler assembler is essentially a one-to-one -one language to machine code which means those instructions that i told you the cpu call is executing they put a name for each instruction so essentially it becomes a one-to-one -one relation between the cpu language and the language that you're writing so assembler is the human version of machine code it's very difficult to write with if you want to write a for loop with that you have to write lines and lines of code to just have a simple for loop so it's not an easy thing but because it is so close to computer it runs very fast high level languages like Pascal, basic, I don't know, COBOL, things like that. These languages are slower, like JavaScript, things like these languages. These languages are like Java. These language, high level languages, are slower because they um, are very far from the CPU. They, are, uh, they interpret your stuff, and then a trans translation goes through several different steps and expands and gets bigger and bigger and bigger, and then then it's fed to CPU. Therefore slow <coughs> sorry so <coughs> that's why c is a middle level language it's neither here nor there in c you can write assembly like code that is very fast you can write basic like code that is very slow so it gives you the choice that's why they call it the middle level level language and that's why it's so popular they actually write operating systems with it because they can be fast if they want to or they can be descriptive if they want to too uh, so that's that. Linux Windows, Linux Windows, all these are operating system. These are the ones. So when a platform essentially means a computer and a compiler and a language, these three combination of three is a platform. So when you actually run something on a computer, depending on what your platform is, you have to change your language and the type of things that you're doing. For example, if I'm writing a C program on Linux, then I need a C compiler on a Linux environment to be able to write a program in C and if I'm writing a program on a C program on Windows on Windows I have to have a C compiler so they say what is your platform I'm gonna say GNU compiler on Linux what is your platform Visual Studio on Windows that explains what type of a compiler you have what type of CPU and what the platform is and writing a platform independent program is possible uh, but it's a little tricky and it's useful so your program runs throughout different platforms when it runs it doesn't run you have to compile it on a platform but you with a minor change and and that's a pretty cool thing to do uh c is case sensitive we know that data types so essentially for every single thing that you want any every single process that you want to do in uh compute in, in, in c language you have uh, as a, a cup a, a container in which you can hold the values that you have the basic things that you have are these two only an integer and a double so float and character and stuff all be gone 
you have two types of containers in C language and two only. And one is integer uh, numbers, integral numbers, and that's it. The other one is floating point numbers that are, um, you can call them real numbers. So these two uh, uh, main categories are what, what everything falls into. So it says character int float double. What is a character? Can somebody tell me what type of a, what in which main category the character, character falls into? Integer. Yeah, and then integer, that's it. So what is the difference between int main and void main? I don't understand when we have to use it. Okay, Nirav, I'll explain that. I'll explain that soon in two seconds, okay? Um, um, if you guys see there is a question in the chat and I did not notice, please, those people with microphone, brave people who don't mind me to hear their voice. I see lots of people actually did not add their uh, audio as I requested in my slide. But uh, please uh, let me know that there's a question in the chat so I don't fall behind. So yeah, as I was saying, as I was saying, uh, <sighs> Um, character is essentially an integer. It's a small integer that goes from 0 to 255 or minus 128 and uh, 127. To explain why it goes like that, when you have 8 bits inside a byte, y you have so many different combinations that you can set to this thing, 256 different combinations. And with these combinations, you need to show numbers. So you have to choose. So, for example, if you look at the the my uh, video right now if i told you let me just see if i'm okay if i told you that i have 10 fingers and with these 10 fingers i want to show numbers i have two choices i can either say i'm going to go start from zero and then go one two three four five six seven eight nine either zero to nine so for ten, 10 fingers i can show from zero to nine but if i choose to show negatives there are two fives, so I have to decide which one of these goes zero. So let's say this one goes zero. Then I'm going to go zero. Uh, I'm going to go minus five, minus four, minus three, minus two, minus one, zero, one, two, three, four. And as you see, the positive number is le one less than the negative number. And that's what happens. So when I say a character as small as integer, you go from zero to two fifty-five. It means you ignore all the integers, negative integers, and you just want to do positive, and that's what it is. Or you can have negatives too. Then because zero cannot be in the middle, you have to put it. They put it in the right a little, so it becomes from minus one hundred twenty-eight and goes to positive one hundred twenty-seven. And if you think about into positive uh, and negative integers, that's the same thing. Just bigger number, but always the negative number is one more. And it's a loop. So if I have 127 in a character, I add one to it, it jumps back to the other end. It becomes minus 128 and it keeps going up. And if I have a minus 128 and reduce it by one, whoop, it becomes positive 127. And that's called overflowing, which means you are put going too much bigger in size than it is and poo, it goes bananas. Okay, um, there was a question over here, Nirav asked, like, well, what is the difference between void main and int main? There is no void main. A void main is a mistake if you're writing it. It's always int main. You shouldn't write void main. But let me show you what it is. So um, the simplest program that I can write, so I'm going to write over here 0, 1, C in C++ source. CPP. Okay, so that's the first thing we wrote. And so what is a return type? Now return type is this. Take a look. And for that I need to actually connect to global protect. So give me two seconds. I'm going to pause, um, connect to this one and resume recording. Pause. Resume recording. Okay. All right. So now you see my screen. I have int main and a return 234 over there. You see that? First of all, void main wrong. Don't do that. Okay. Number two, int return 234. So if I return 234 and execute this program, you will see that nothing really happens. We don't see anything. So where that thing, but take a look at this. It says yada, 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 exit it with code 234. You see that? 
now if I actually go to the directory that my program is so let me just take a look at the bot so this is the one I'm gonna copy and I'm, I'm gonna open a command line and I'm gonna go to drive D and I'm gonna go CD to this one CD debug okay this is the executable of my program IPC 144 review take a look I'm gonna go IPC 144 review IPC 144 review okay and I'm gonna execute this program as soon as I execute I'm gonna tell to your operating system I'm gonna say echo error level and hit enter you see two three four in here so essentially that's what the code app your application returns so in here if I go nano test dot C and in here write the exact same program so copy this oh sorry copy this and write this program in here exit so if I say G GCC test dot, dot C so it compiles and I'm gonna say a dot out now I'm gonna say echo dollar sign question mark and you see it says two three four so when your program ends you have a chance to send a message to the operating system how your program ended now when your program is something like it let's say if I if I do over here LS this LS that I did executed a program executed a uh, uh, a program and if I now go echo it's gonna give zero that was LS telling everything went okay zero doesn't mean true zero means nothing special happened so every single function every single program that is running is responsible to send the status back in case you want to write a script shell script so you can test to see how the program ended and act accordingly that's what return statement is are we okay with this There have you there. Yes, professor. Yeah. Okay. That's all. So that's that's what it is, and there is no confusion about it. Just that's uh, that's the return statement. So I'm going to put over here zero two um, main returns. Okay, and that's not a CPP thing, that's a C thing. And whenever we say it's a C thing, it means it's CPP2. They're, they're the same, no difference. All right, so let's continue. So these are the arithmetic stuff that we have. Um, again, when I say it, so character is a small integer. This is another int integer, 32-bit. We have a float, we have a double, and we have short, means two bytes long depending on what is the fetch width of the thing it changes long long is a bigger integer so these are just different size of the integers so we have two main categories we have series of integers and we have series of uh, uh, floats so we have float double and we have long double so these are the things that we, we can actually um, use for that one uh, characters um, yeah, th those are the bits of the, the bits of the like each character is shown by a bit pattern the bit pattern um, um, the bit pattern that you have in that one byte that displays the the, the character is uh, uh, representing what the character is and that's what they call it an ASCII code so when you have a character uh, this ASCII code of a character essentially means what a character's um, uh, what a character's uh, what integer is actually held in a character so if i have uh, uh, the include over here include uh, c c s t d i o so if i have something like this um, oh, i don't want that i'm going to put zero here Again, remember that return statement doesn't tell to operating system to do anything. It's, it's for you to grab later on after what your program is doing. 
so anyways if i say over here so if i have over here integer uh, character uh, ch is set to a uh, then if i say over here printf percent c and percent d and go to new line which is and then i'm going to put ch and ch what happens is that i'm going to see what ca what character a look like and what is the ascii code inside that is 65 and that is why when you actually add one to uh to uh, uh, a character it essentially goes to the next character and uh, becomes b as you see so a and that's b so uh, we'll see what happens so hopefully we understand what ascii code is are we okay do we understand what an ascii code is all right so that's good floating variable yada 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 let's go to next uh, simple calculations, so I'm not going to go through this. Anybody have any questions about this? P calculations in C language, like expressions and stuff? Variables, things? No? Okay. So remember, these are the uh, the ASCII codes that you have for different things. Backslash A just sounds an alarm. Backslash B, it's the um, a backspace form feed. If you have a printer, you print this. It's going to print a blank page new line is new line and so on and so forth so return carry this goes to the beginning that so these are the things that uh, you got to go through it and print them one by one and see what happens um, so what else do we have over here scanf we are okay with it uh, we know how scanf works you have to put an ampersand beside the things that are not an address to extract their addresses because scanf needs to know where to put the values so that's why scanfs always have an ampersand beside it and that ampersand means get a floating point number and put it in the address of radius as a double as a float and therefore the value that is going to be scanned from the keyboard is going to go into the float variable and it's going to be put over there and that's why we have ampersand inside the scanfs but we don't have that one inside printfs because printf prints the content so it has access to it but scanf needs to know where it is to actually uh, put it in there so um kevin you had a question i had a yes over there where are addresses for addressable memory located no this it's not located anywhere oh uh, why do why why do they need to be located okay so if i so i have Natalia, are you with me <coughs> okay now if i told you which one is the third finger <laughs> you could say one two three so this is the third finger you don't need to store it anywhere you count them and that tells you what is the address <laughs> do we understand it's a sequence number so it doesn't need to be kept somewhere when you put stuff in order the sequence number is a natural thing that comes through it so when you actually say go to address 900 the compiler literally counts from zero goes to 900 and puts it over there it's not stored anywhere it's just the sequence number of the of the of the bytes are we okay with this <coughs> all right so i see an okay and hopefully that's what it is so are we okay do we understand why scanf needs uh, ampersand all right computation operand yada 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 every single operator that you see ladies and gentlemen they are just working the exact same way every single operator has an operand or two operands they do something to those operands or get values from those operands and they return a value and there is no exception all operators work the same all right expressions and that's exactly what i wanted to say so arithmetic logical relation there's one more question in chat oh, one more question um is physical memory and one that program users are the same yeah um no they are not the same um uh the addresses that your program use is where your address begin mm, that's wrong it is the physical address let's put it that way yeah 
Uh, it depends on the structure of the computer. The computers are designed differently. Some, like some old operating systems, used to actually use segments, and 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 offset, which means they say from fifth segment of the memory go for 50 bytes further, and then the that's when you you d the the uh, the variables pointers that held the address were small. Now they are big enough to hold the size of the whole thing. So uh, we would say yes, the physical address of the memory in your computer and what you see when you're actually printing it. So if I actually print something like this, so if I actually say printf percent u and I put address of ch, essentially that address that you see is where actually my ch is sitting in the memory. That's the physical address for it, yes. <coughs> Are we okay with that, Natalia? All right. Okay, so I'm going to remove that because it's going to confuse the heck out of everyone. So that's going to be character. So ASCII code. Char ASCII. Okay. So, um, um, any problem with these op uh, op operands? Does everybody knows what uh, modulus do. Everybody's okay with modulus. The what? That freaky one. Okay. All right. Unary operators. Unary operators uh, work with one operand in front of them. Lots of people are not replying to the to the to the, to the poll. So. Uh, I know few people are were, were driving, hopefully, but um, yeah. Anyways, uh, so um, yeah. So a uh, unit operators only get one operand, like minus two, minus ten, um, minus a, minus b. Binary operators get two things, like a plus b, a less than b, five less than k, something like that. Um, so that's that's those are the operands. Um, relational operators don't give them extra credits. Exactly like regular operators, the only difference is that um, they compare things. Okay, so when you you literally can say a is set to so we can literally say something like this. So so if so I can literally say something like this. I can say integer a and I can say a is equal to ch um, uh, less than uh, z okay if I if I do something like this and I can say printf uh, percent d and I'm gonna print that a thingy over there uh, can anybody tell me what is the output of this program in the chat What is the output of this program? The zero? Is A less than Z, Z or not? Oh, one. It'll be true. One, yeah, it's one, it's true. One. True is one. So all operators in C language work the same. So the job of less than operator is to compare the ASCII value of CH to ASCII value of Z. And if the ASCII value of CH is less than Z, it returns true. Otherwise, it returns false. So. So if I do something like this, if I go over here greater than Z, yeah, so the, f the first one's going to be uh, 1 and the second one's going to be 0. Very but it produces the same result if uh, you had to find A to be Boolean? We don't have Boolean. This is C language. But yes, Boolean is nothing. It's a good... Boolean is a good... Uh, cover for an integer that we, we we are afraid to call one and zero true is essentially one and false is zero yeah that's c plus plus that's not c all right so that's that so that's what it is and just keep that in mind uh so when we are talking about operators they're all the same we don't need to go through it that much it's it's exactly the same thing it just have different different responsibilities and that's all 
their job like when I say and over here if I say operand and an operand uh, I can I can I can write something like this I can say uh, B is set to 1 and C set to 0 and D set to 1 let's say it's 25 okay if I say over here A is equal to B and D then what is the output then what is the output of this now can anybody tell me Part time, it's actually 1 because B is 1, which means true. D is 25. It is not 0, so it's true. So it's true and true and true and true is true. So <coughs> again, this is just, these are just condition of quote. Again, the job of the operator is that, but we can use it for conditions too if we want to. Th when you put and, it means I want this condition to be checked with this condition because this is just an integer, it checks its value. I could have said if B is less than or equal to 1 and D is greater than 100, then that becomes a different story. Uh, now, uh, this becomes true and this becomes false and true and false becomes false and that becomes, uh, uh, oh, what does it say? What is the error? Oh, semicolon. So there you go. As you see, they're zero and zero. Okay. So, oh, why did it do that to me? This is correct. Sorry, Sorry. my bad. You got another okay. question in chat too. Wait a minute. What happened over here? B is one. A is equal to B and D. Why is oh? Because I'm printing an extra A over here. Bad boy, I am. Yes, and the question says, can you please explain casting? How to make int to a double, for example. Uh, sure, I'll explain what casting is. Casting essentially means temporarily changing um, the type of a variable to another type based on your need. Um, let me just first run this, make sure everything's good. Yeah, so this is good. So, uh, uh, can you explain line 11 before I started casting? Of course, operators. Let's see here. Line eleven, you said. Yes. Okay. Um, uh, please stay with me, Mashad. Please, okay. Mm -hmm. uh, so, Mashad, I have an and over here, right? Mm -hmm. When you say and, what you desire is to see conditions. With and, you cannot have anything other than condition, right? Yeah. If I am at home and I'm hungry, I'm gonna eat. What does it mean? It means if I'm not home, I'm not going to eat. If I'm not hungry, I'm not going to eat. If mm -hmm. I am at home and hungry at the same time, that's going to result of eating, which means I have to check the truth and falsehood of those two conditions, correct? Yes. Okay. So when I put over here and, and I put two things around the, uh, the and, what happens, mm -hmm. what Natalia asks? Compiler says there must be true or false at left and right side of the end. So I'm going to cast this to a true and false. This one, a one is a true, so that will be considered as true. In here, I have a 25. 25 is a non-zero value. That is considered true too. So it's going to be true and a true, and therefore A becomes true, which is one. Are we okay with this? Yes. And the other one is an actual condition. So that one makes more sense. I'm saying b less than one less than or equal to one that is so that's true mm -hmm. and d greater than 100 which is not that's false so this was like a condition type of a thing so it, it really makes sense i'm saying if this is so the first one is true the second one's false therefore a is false are we okay yes thank okay you. so and going back to what natalia says over here uh, what does it mean casting so casting happens so compiler tries to guess what you do and always casts the things that you want to deal with so if I have integer i set to 0 and I say i is set to 2.345 or 2.999 if I do something like this then I'm gonna actually print i
compiler tries to cast this to an integer so what it does it simply says okay I have 2999 over here um, I'm gonna take the whole part of it and put that one in a uh, in, in I and therefore when you actually print it the results gonna be two it's not gonna round it the no process happens it's casting it tries to cast that one and therefore it's gonna be two you can enforce that by yourself now if you work with later versions of C and C++ they start giving you warnings on these things when you don't cast them they, they tell you hey you are putting doubles into an integer over here you must you might lose uh, some significant value in here that you're not aware of are you sure so those type of warnings come up to prevent those warnings you tell to the compiler convert this to an integer so you are literally telling them that I want that thing to be casted to an integer so it temporarily grabs this value converts it to an integer and therefore the assignment becomes an integer set to an integer therefore no warning and it works the exact same way with absolutely no difference so if you put the type and you put parentheses in front of it you're <coughs> telling to compiler I want this temporarily to be changed to this type if compiler can do it it will do it for you otherwise you got to get an error and like this you are not up for any surprise so the casting is not going to happen in a way that you don't expect to it is what you ask it for if you don't leave it by default for the compiler compiler might do a cast that you did not want it to happen and therefore do something that is that that is not good so writing the cast in front of it kind of tells the compiler I want this happen so make it happen um, are we okay with this Italia all right hello professor go ahead yes I just want to ask that uh, this uh, casting is a good practice or we should avoid it's always good practice this. to actually do the casting so see first of all when you are putting a double into an integer hopefully you have a reason for it okay yeah hopefully you have a reason for it so if that reason is valid if the reason that you want a double to actually be converted to an integer in, is valid putting the cast in front of it is very good practice so first of all you don't let you should never let compiler to do its defaults because defaults change by time and then you compile yeah. your, your programs may not run in 10 years so it's a good idea not to leave things to default which comes to cast so if you intend for this to happen then write it in front of it so compiler knows you are doing it on purpose okay yes professor thank you yeah you're welcome my name is farda don't call me professor thank you <laughs> All right. okay so uh, explaining structures and the area of structures i'm coming to that devish uh, um, devams if i'm pronouncing your name properly I'm, i apologize if i'm murdering your names um so that's that so uh, uh quickly gonna continue this uh these things you go, gotta go oh, the only uh, these things remember um, this happens before and these are very awkward operators of c language so if plus plus comes before it happens before the line when it comes after it comes after the line avoid using more than one of these things in an expression so having something like this professor sometimes i'm confused with the suffix and perfect of uh, increment and decrement yeah, that's can you please explain I, I am doing it so so i'm gonna say a over here is set to plus plus a when you write something like this it means this is happening before so essentially this expands to this it becomes a is set to a plus one and then i will be set to a so line number six and line number eight and nine are identical if you write i is a plus plus it means it comes after it means i will be set to a and then a will be a plus one so i'm gonna say expands 
to line 14 and 15. And this one expands to lines 8 and 9. Okay? That's all about it. So just be aware of that. So when you have any prefix thing, that prefix, uh, that prefix uh, uh, operation gets expanded, which means first I want it to be added, and then it will be added like that. So that's why you should never write stuff like this. <coughs> you should never write stuff like this. That's just, that's, and then go, that's just crude and awful. Like, why doing something like this? R expand it so people can understand what's going on. This plus plus and minus minus are created to make things faster in coding. So when they're just standing by themselves in a for loop or something, they're fine. But writing, especially writing stupid stuff like this, that's that I hate when I see something like this. I mean, like, come on, don't do stuff like this. Very bad things to do. Bad practice. Okay, don't. I don't want to even explain what is it going to expand to because if I see that, I'm not going to hire that programmer. Okay, so keep that in mind. Are we okay with plus, plus, and minus, minus, hopefully? All right. Floating points and stuff, same thing. No difference. You don't want to... That's okay. Casting, we talked about it. Uh, mixed type, we know all these things. These are just the names. So when you say long double, it's just a double that is long. It's 16 bytes instead of 8. And long long is um, uh, 8 bytes instead of uh, 4. And it depends on, uh, on the operating system, the sizes for change. And this is what the size of is for, and I see some people actually use it, so I have to explain over here. So mm, zero 06 uh, uh, pre and post operators. So there's something that I that I keep seeing of the, that people are using, and, and it's it's bothering. A size off is to find out what is the size of a type. It's not to measure an array size. Okay. So when you do size off, if I say size off printf percent d backslash n I can say over here size of long double and that's going to tell me what is the size of a long double on this computer which is 8 bytes and what is the size of a <coughs> depending on the type of the platform you're on it may be different what is the size of a long that is four what is the size of a long long <coughs> and that's that eight so so if you want to see what is the size so as you see long double and double are probably the same on this computer on this platform if I run it you'll see they're both eight so uh, keep that in mind okay so size of tells you what is the size of something so that student thingy that I had over there uh, where did I have it yeah I don't know where it was I'm gonna do one more over here so if I have struct uh, student same thing I'm gonna over here double GPA int uh, student number and int semester now if I say over here printf size of the student then it's going to tell me what the student size is going to be in memory student okay so when I run this you will see that 16 you can never ever do the size of a variable uh, of uh, of an array that's wrong so if I have over here integer a uh, let, let's call it foo a int a like that 
and I write over here int array int ar and I'm gonna put over here 10 okay just to show you what does it what is the difference in here I'm gonna go size of a and in here I'm gonna go size of ar and and print that one so sorry let me print this and print this return so in here I'm gonna put a in here I'm gonna put AR so if I put something like this in here so and and also I have to put this one for you just to see so if I say double D then uh, D is the same thing as the double so it actually ex tells you what is the size of its type when I have an array like this and I get its size within the scope of the array that size gives you the size of the array in bytes which is 10 integers which is 40 if you get try to get the size of an array inside um, a, f uh, uh, um, a function it always gives you the value 4 now to just to show you what what the results of this uh, of this program is why do I get an error Um, return zero yeah I want to say no not zero I, I want to put it void I'm gonna make it void sorry so if I run this code right now you will see that <coughs> oh I didn't call that function so I'm gonna call function foo in here run it one more time oh gosh I, foo and ar so I'm passing ar to foo and I'm getting the size of ar in foo and if you run it, you will see that AR in main is 40 because it's 10 integers multiplied by 4. That's the size of AR in main. But if you go in foo, the compiler has no idea that A is 1 integer or 10. The only thing that it knows is the address of A that is an address. Uh, the, sorry, the size of A that is address of the array. And addresses are kept in a 4-byte integer in the computer. Therefore, anything you pass to it, it's going to be always four. It never gives you. So size of does not give you the size of an array. You can never use it for an array. You don't understand what it is. Do not use it. Do not use size of until you understand. So in here, I'm going to say 07. Do not use size of. It's too rich for your blood. Do not use it. You don't know what does it do. Just don't guess, okay? Keep that in mind. All right, so next, um, we talked about all these things, casting and stuff. So when they say promotion, essentially, so <coughs> downcast promotion, what does it mean? Downcast means casting a big type into a small one. So if you have an integer, you, you cast a double into an integer, that's a downcast. If you have a character, you cast that character to an integer, it's one byte integer being casted to four, that's a promotion that's an upcast or if you put an integer and cast it to a double that's a promotion that's an upcast are we okay with this everyone logic um, I'm not gonna go through this hopefully throughout the semester you know what the logic is anybody um, uh, people are not responding to this so what I'm gonna do at this moment I'm gonna give everybody uh, a five minutes break ten minutes break and then we're gonna come back because I see people are not responding it means either they're gone or I don't know what's going on but so I'm gonna uh, stop the, the poll now so uh, <coughs> um, we're gonna have say a ten minutes break and then we're gonna come back and continue so let me stop sharing your screen stop sharing and please remind me to continue recording because I'm going to pause it now. Here. And going back to the poll. So, uh, the bit logics and stuff. Uh, uh, please stop me if you have any qu questions. I, I'm not going to keep polling on this. If statement, we are fine. If else statement, hope, uh, when I say we are fine, it means if you're not, uh, uh, ping or do something. Um, say something explain that I'm gonna explain uh, switch statement um, we are okay hopefully 
Um, uh, professor, can you please uh, give a small overview about if, else, while, and for, like not the case thing? Okay, if, else, while, and for, a quick thing. Yeah. Okay, so, uh, sure. Um, uh, ask, add, uh, respond to, uh, uh, how do I, uh, wait a minute, if it is, uh, uh, I, I don't know if I'm pronouncing your name properly. Davamsh, is that correct? Okay. Oh, Davamsh, I'll talk about model of planes after the class if you want to ask. <laughs> if I start talking about them, I'm never going to stop. So we'll talk about that later. So so if uh, I'm talking about the if statements and all those good stuff, I'm just going to go through it very quickly. So this is do not use size of that we talked about. So if condition, first block, second block, if it's true, this happens. If condition is true, condition could be any value that gets casted to a Boolean. So you can have over here 2, 3, 4. That means true, which means this part happens. If you have over 0, it means this part is happening. 0 is false, the other one is true, and it keeps going. That's it. So if, else, that's that. If else, if that's a structure that is that chooses one condition out of others. So if you have many selections that you have and you want to select one of those selections, one of those conditions. So else, if if you have a condition like this, then only uh, um, one or none of uh, uh, one or none of these will happen. So any of these conditions come true in order, then the rest will be ignored. So if I have over here zero, in here I have one, in here I have zero, in here I have two, the first one that hits it that is true, that's going to happen. So here line nine is going to happen because it's one and everything else will be ignored. This one, although it has a true condition, it will not happen because it will be ignored. So it's one out of many or none out of many, which means if I have zeros everywhere, nothing happens. This if statement is completely walked through with nothing on it. Unless you add an extra else in here. If you add an extra else, then it becomes one or uh, one out of many, which means if they are all zero, this happens. If it's one, then this one happens and the rest won't. So that's else if. So we are okay with else if? All right. And good that you're safe at your uh, destination, Alex. Um, glad to hear that. Uh, can I ask something regarding this? You can ask 55 uh, things if you want. Yeah. No, just one will be enough. Okay. Um, you know, we can do if else with a question mark and colon notation as well. Is that's there a way to... That's not if else, we'll talk about it. That's a conditional expression. Okay. Conditional expression right. is an extremely tricky thing. I'll talk about it. Okay? Okay. So, okay, thank you for, for reminding that. Okay, so that's if else. Uh, so we are okay with if else, uh, an if statement. The next thing would be um, a while loop. A while loop if, is a repetitive if statement. So when you say while condition, as long as the condition is true, the body of the loop keeps happening. When it goes false, it stops and goes out. And that's all about it. You should never, ever break the condition in any other way than breaking the condition itself, which means using stuff like break and continue are forbidden. Seriously, if anybody sees you are using any of these two in a while loop, a break or a continue in a while loop, they'll never hire you. It means you are going back to the dinosaur's time. So we had assembly language, then we had high-level languages, then we had structured programming, then we had object-oriented programming, now we have functional programming. You are back to assembly programming, the beginning of like 50 years ago, 40 years ago. So never ever use break and continue because it breaks the condition out of the ordinary and creates spaghetti cold. We do not want that. So never ever use break or continue in a while loop. 
only let the condition break it so it's always a good practice to have integer done set to uh, zero and then you say while not done if you have many conditions while not done then do whatever you are doing uh, and set the done true so if and then um, else if whatever and else so let's say if this condition happens I want to do something if this condition happens otherwise I'm gonna say done is true so if you have many conditions you can put the done over here too done is true so what happens you're saying if this condition happens stop the loop if this condition happens stop the loop. otherwise do this and continue so this is the perfect way of writing a while statement while loops always continue as uh, the um, uh, condition is true and uh, it stops when it's false and I'm gonna do something in here let me just copy I'm gonna go this I'm gonna write over here 0 8 if else dot CPP I just want all of them to be there so when you're looking at the thing so that's that one and this is the while loop zero nine while okay <coughs> so a do was a while loop so a while loop um, happens none or many times okay okay so zero or many times so it is possible that it will never happen so if the condition of the true of of the while loop is true right uh, is false right from the beginning so it is done it will never happen so that's what the while loop for is for if you want something to happen at least once either you have to set the condition of the while loop properly which is the way I did it so done and then you go this happens once or you write do and then you write the condition at the end while not done okay so if you have something like this this happens at least once so this loop uh, happens at least once okay this loop is the only thing you need to do is to do programming there is no other loop needed all the other loops gets translated to this one so while not done the while that we have any loop that you have is essentially that no difference a do while is implementable with while loop no difference another loop is a for loop so when you write for whatever or I'm gonna say over here first condition last okay when you have a for loop like this this for loop gets translated to this first while condition in here I'm gonna say body of the loop whatever the body is body and last so when you write a for loop you're actually writing this while loop exactly the same absolutely no difference and you can write several stuff in here so you can have first one and over here first two and in here you can have last one last two you can do that easily there is no problem so this becomes first one first two and last one and last two and that is exactly what is translated to so for loop is just a combo that you don't you're lazy to write the while loop like that and it works like this absolutely no difference it keeps re so first it's gonna do this part then it checks the condition if it's true it's gonna keep doing this one and then this one until it's gonna do the body and then the last parts until the condition goes false that's it absolutely no difference with a while loop it is actually translated into a while loop 
directly with absolutely no difference again no break no continue is allowed in a loop that you see are we okay with uh, conditional expressions down to this point Few people are not um, answering. Fred, uh, Jesse, or Gessie, Maj, Nirav, Fam, guys, you're not replying. Anyways, um, hopefully, okay. So uh, <laughs> I don't know what no is. No means you have a problem. You have problem with this. You didn't get it. You want? Yeah, I'm a little confused with this uh, uh, for uh, loop again. Like. Uh, what is confusing about it? I, I'm telling you, are you you're conf are you confused with while loop two? Not with the while, but with the for. So for is a while. What's the difference? I'm telling you, it exactly gets translated to this. Don't use it if you don't want it. You follow what I'm saying? For loop hap is translated exactly to this. There is. Mm, um, I, I want to know what are you confused about? Like. Um, what what it doesn't like you're saying why we have it is that the reason uh, that's okay i think maybe i'll go through uh, the lecture once again later and yes. i'll be clear so about let me just do it one let me just I write a functioning program that runs to see yeah. if the confusion is over so okay. uh in here i'm uh, this i'm not going to call it while i'm going to call it a loop because that's loops i'm going to call it loops loops so it's done so we already uh, saved that oh mm, no that was a while while in it, this one is going to be loops and now, now let, let me actually write a while loop so we'll see exactly what it means <clears throat> so in here i'm going to say printf First, go to new line, and in here I'm going to have integer cnt, and I'm going to set cnt to 3. Then I'm going to say while cnt, and I'm doing it on purpose so you see the condition doesn't have to be a condition. It could be anything, okay? Now in here I'm going to say print f body. And I go to new line. Now I'm going to do CNT minus minus. And in here I'm going to say printf last two. Go to new line. And in here, I'm going to say printf out of loop. So now, if I actually look at this while loop, let's see how it happens. Let's actually walk through it step by step. And how do I walk through? I press F10 to go through steps one by one. F10 starts the compiling. It comes right to the beginning. I'm going to bring this one to left and this one to right so we can see. Now, CNT becomes three, prints first. Then CNT is three because it's non-zero. It's correct. It goes through. That's the body of the loop happening. CNT becomes minus minus reduced by one and last two goes back up. Now CNT is two prints the body again. CNT minus minus again last two goes up. Um, CNT one goes to the body again last two comes up. CNT becomes zero. It breaks and goes out of the loop. Just to uh, make it uh, look like a loop, I'm going to actually indent this one, two, three, and one, two, three, and run it one more time. So uh, let's stop the debugging, and I'm going to run it one more time just to see how it works. Run to cursor. So essentially, that's first, that's the body that is happening, that's the outlook. Are we okay down to here about the uh, while loop? 
okay so now what I'm going to do actually let's um, uh, see and yeah so that's what that's what I'm going to do and I uh, and I could print the CNT in here too so I'm going to put last two and I'm going to put over here percent D to show the value of CNT after it's being reduced so one more time I'm going to run this So as you see, it's, it becomes 2, 1, 0, and then 0 is the out of the loop that it goes out. Again, are we okay with this? All right. Now I'm going to make one more change, and I'm going to ask you if you're okay again. One more change, and this more change, I'm going to not initialize the CNT and actually write CNT set to zero in here so it's going to be after first i'm going to put over here x and i'm going to put it over here like this so the results are all the same no difference and are we okay with this this way you're hard coding uh, cnt right uh yeah i'm just setting cnt to three when i start so I can have this happening three times. Are we good? And Magathan, you said no, you're not okay. Explain why. What's the question? And if you guys can act can activate your microphone, please activate your microphone. Click on the hang up thingy, leave audio, and come back in with microphone so we can talk. It's much more productive if you talk instead of typing. I would really appreciate that. Oh, okay, just join. Okay, so Natalia says, uh, I, no, you can't do that, Natalia. And John says something. Oh, people are, whoop, everybody's talking with each other over there. Uh, I asked for an example when you were talking about for loops were essentially the same as whiles. Oh, okay, so we are doing it now. We're going to do it now. Okay, so we are uh, doing sure. it. Sure. Okay, so now, so now. So, uh, okay. Let's mute Rishi. Okay, so <clears throat> now, as you see over here, uh, now, as you see over here, this is the first part right these two statements are the first part so that's what i'm going to do so my for loop is going to be four and i'm going to put these two statements so it's going to be printf so let me just copy and paste so this one comes in here printf copy goes in this for loop comma now cnt is equal to three that's the first then i have a comma uh, semicolon then I have the condition that is CNT then I have the body oh see as uh, condition is CNT then I'm gonna have the last the last are these two which is CNT minus minus and printf last CNT I'm gonna put these two over here and then I'm gonna open this up and the body is printf body backslash n printf body backslash n and printf out of the loop okay now I'm gonna run this program and let's put two backslash n's over here and you will see when I run this they are identical okay so if you wanna write it I wrote it complicated like this to show you that it is essentially what it is of course when you are writing a for loop quickly you write for <coughs> and you have you write for cnt equal to zero and cnt less than three and cnt plus plus this is how you run from and then you print the body so that i understand so this is essentially your your regular loop that you're writing and it runs it for three times which is perfectly correct but what i'm saying is that understand how the for loop works and it becomes an easy thing it is essentially a while loop with absolutely no difference anything that you want to happen before the loop you put it in the first portion of the for loop anything you want to happen inside the loop you put it inside the loop 
anything you want to you want to happen last in the body of the loop you put it at the last portion of the for loop and that's what you have as as easy as it can get there is absolutely no difference so essentially this for loop converted to a while loop becomes cnt set to zero while cnt less than three and printf body and cnt plus plus and again if i run this program you will see that it is exactly the same with absolutely no problem let me put the semicolon here and as you see they are running identical so for loop while loop potatoes potatoes they are exactly the same are we okay with this Actually, I never knew that we can write printf statement uh, between for loop condition as well. Any so that's place, the thing that's, that's the thing that you that these are the behaviors you have to learn about C language. Any place you can put an expression, you can put anything you want. You can put a function call. You can do anything you want. That's C language. That's the beauty of C language. You can write it high level like this, so everybody understands, or you can go bananas like this, so nobody understands what you're doing. So it's it's a lot but i prefer writing this than writing a crazy thing like that um, so it's a good idea to write your code readable so people understand it but at the same time know what happens behind the scenes so we know what's going on so this is uh, uh, 10 and i'm gonna say for and while example Professor, I have a question. Go ahead. That ties into what we've learned. Okay. Um, I just wanted to ask, how does like for loops and while loops relate to the idea of memory? Um, um, your your audio is very um, low in volume. Uh, can you repeat that or increase the volume if possible, or bring the headphone uh, microphone in front of your mouth? Sure. Is this better? What? Oh, day and night. Go ahead. Okay, so uh, I wanted to ask, how does this tie in with memory management, like with for loops and while loops? Or is that like beyond the scope of... It's not beyond the scope. This is logic. In logic, this you can use for memory management or you can print 50 employees with it. Memory management is a logic. It's something that you need the logic to follow. Memory management... Okay, if I told you, how does a for loop incorporates with an accounting uh, application? How to implement accounting application? Can you explain it to me? Or how can I write a for loop to write a game? How can I write a for loop to uh, create a statistical program? Can I answer that question? No, because each one is a different problem you want to solve with a, with a computer program. Memory management is just another problem that should be solved by a program. Now what you're going to use to it, it's not like loops are for memory management. Nope, not at all. If you need it, you use it. If you don't, you don't. Did, did I answer the question? Um, is it, there is no relation between the two. So you know how with data types, um, each each data type has like its own unique set of um, bits that are yeah. stored in an address. Right? Okay, yeah. Okay. How does it work okay. with um, with like for loops? So with like each instant, like each iteration, it stores that designated amount. Like for example, like you know, in the body of the for loop, you. It's you had... It has nothing to do. A for loop has nothing to do with memory storage. It's a logic. There are two separate entities. An if statement and an integer are not related. Now, I cannot tell you how if statement incorporates with an integer. Because one is a memory that holds stuff. The other one is a logic that does stuff. Okay. Memory is something that holds stuff. For loop is something that does stuff. Now, if what you do is holding stuff, then they can get related. So, so they have absolutely no relation with each other. One can be implement. Yeah. So it's not. Okay. So, yeah. Okay. Hopefully, I, I don't know how to explain better than that. My apologies. 
But no, uh, that helps for okay, sure. Okay, perfect. All right. All right. Any other question before we continue? All right. So else if we go, oh, and switch statement. Switch statement is any the only place you can use a break statement in it. Anybody needs to needs to know about switch? Did I talk about switch, or you know what switch is? I know it's used for menus. Switch is used. Uh, switch is used to check a value of something against different values and execute something based on it. So let me just let me just put it now that I'm putting it. So a switch statement is essentially a translation of this else if. So if I have if cnt equals to zero so switch statement only checks for equality you can't use it for anything else uh, else if uh, cnt is equal to one well let's actually put random values over here i'm going to put five i'm going to put ten else if cnt is 11 and cnt is 12 else so if you want to write something like this and whatever i'm going to say over here scan f percent d and let's say let's say this is the program that is getting the CNT to do something with it, I don't know, and, and then it, you want to make a decision. So if you're writing an if statement like this, instead you can write a switch. If you have one value and you want to compare that one value with different values, this is how you do it. So you write switch to the value of CNT, then you're saying case 5 break. This is the first one. So you wrote this one. Then you write case 10 break. Now you want to write this one. You want to have two conditions. You write case 11, case 12, and then break. So now you wrote this one. And at the end, you say default this one. So you this a switch this is the switch equivalent of this if else statement and the only difference between the two is the performance switch is much faster than if why because the sky is higher i can't i don't want to explain it but just believe me on this this if else statement is translated in this switch statement so if you have a single value that you want to compare it against different values and doing something this is your friend why a menu is suitable for this because menu has selections and selection is a number and you cannot say I want option two and a half it doesn't work that way that's why it's very suitable to be implemented by switch statements so so instead of the if and else if, I can just use a switch statement and it's exactly the Not same thing as the if, if and if. Only if, only and only if you have mm -hmm. a single value being checked against different values. For equality, you cannot say less than 10. This is not implementable with switch. Only in qual equality, so only... Oh. Is there any limit on number of case not we can all, use? Not at all, not at all. The limit is the no complexity, complexity of your program. If you have a switch statement with 900 case, it means you're doing something wrong. It means okay. you're, 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 you have to come up with the logic. <laughs> that's, that's all it means. So uh, this if, so I'm going to write this essentially, this if is suitable to be converted to switch because it is it is comparing 
a variable to several values for equality. Okay. So in how many cases you suggest uh, the usage of switch? If you are, if, only if this. Otherwise, use an if and else. And with these computers now, if you're not writing a game that you need high speed because you have 50 CGI's running in a, in a, in a graphical environment quickly and you want to loop around and see who's shot in a head, then you use a switch, yeah. But if you're just writing an accounting program, go with an if else statement. If you need speed and it's important for you, then that switch statement. Otherwise, use an if else. No difference. Okay? Are we good? All right. Are we okay? All right. This review is becoming much more comprehensive than I thought. I thought I'm going to come explain pointers and go, but whoa, we are going deep. So, so switch statements. So it's kind of IPC 144 in a nutshell. <laughs> uh, all right. So, <clears throat> so, um, uh, so we are here now. Um, switch statements and uh, somebody asked about conditional operate expression. Who was that? Somebody said no. Uh, wait a minute. Wait, wait, wait. Now, Prit, what's what's the question? Yes, Professor, I have a question related to switch. Like, I suppose we have a uh, twenty-one cases. Uh, yesterday, I was doing my web uh, web uh, assignment. There were there are the twenty-one cases over there. Instead of doing the if else if uh, else if else if, can we use over there uh, means uh, if switch statement? If you have twenty-one, you said. Uh, twenty-one cases. Nafbrit, you are the programmer. Whatever you like, man. Use. There is no. I can't say if it's 19 do else if it's 22 switch it's your you're the programmer it doesn't make any difference whichever suits you better that's the one okay, okay means like it would be uh, switch would be better over there because i wouldn't say, if, uh, I wouldn't I say switch think. would be better like if if the condition is what you is if you have 21 different selections you want to have a switch you think switch is more presentable you like it use a switch Okay. But in that case, what's your suggestion, Professor? Like, what would you prefer? Like, in 19 to 20 cases, you'll prefer switch or you'll prefer? It, it, it depends. Like, if like if I'm if I'm if you if depends what happens for every single case. If every single case is a comprehensive, they have to write. I have to do 50 different things if certain case happens. If I am writing the switch statement, then each case of mine will call a function. So it's not too complicated. I'm not going to write a switch statement and write 50 lines of code in each case and I have 21 cases because that's di difficult to debug. You follow what I'm saying? If you have to scroll 50 pages up and down just to follow one switch statement, that's wrong. Then I'm going to have every case as a separate function and call the separate function. So put all this stuff that I'm, if I want to use the switch statement. Actually, with 21 cases, no matter what I write, I'm going to do that. For 21 cases, every single case of mine will call a separate function that does what it's needed to do. Is that, does that make sense? Hello? Yeah. Okay, beautiful. Um, the rule, the, the golden universal rule of programming is that if it's too complicated, put it in a function. If it's too long, put it in a function. Always. There's no, there's no doubt in that. So, so that's that. Uh, um, I was the one asking about the, uh, the if statements, um, the okay. yeah, question oh, mark. Okay. So let's actually talk about that. Now, in here, I want your attention, okay? So I'm going to write an if statement that is suitable to be con converted to a conditional expression. <clears throat> so if you have this scenario where <clears throat> you want to say if condition is 
value is set to uh, something. Um, uh, value is set to uh, um, something. <laughs> and then else, you have value is set to something else. Okay, now this is suitable to be converted to uh, a switch statement, which essentially is value is set to condition, question mark, something, something else. Okay, so this is the if statement, this is the conditional expression. Okay, but that doesn't prevent you. Now, we are going back, I think it was, uh, uh, who was it? I think it was uh, Simmerjit that was saying that uh, <coughs> I didn't know that we were supposed to put, uh, we can put a function where the thing is. Was, was, that, was that you? Uh, yes, I was talking about the printed statement. Yeah, so this is the, another thing. This doesn't mean that, so, as, so sometimes I want to do something like this, if condition function one else function two function uh, function another function okay so func two I'm gonna call it sometimes you have something like this this is easily convertible too but there is a there is a if over here. there is a there is something extremely important over here. So, so that's func and func2. Any place you put an expression, you can put a function in. Okay? So this can be... And as you see, I'm not setting anything to anything here. So essentially, <coughs> there is no return value. But I want everybody to pay attention to this extremely important thing to say. Okay? <coughs> If the first function that I have, so I'm going to write over here the functions. <coughs> My apologies. Int func double func2. Okay? So the first function over here is returning an integer, and the second one is returning a double. This is not legit. You can't do this. A condition or expression is, ex is an extremely fast if statement. And the values that you have in two must be of the same type. So something and something S must be of the same type. You cannot have different types even if it, you don't return anything. So these functions, they are returning two different values. You cannot do that. They must both be integer, both be double, both be student or both be void. So these two conditions of a condition or expression must be identical in type for you to be able to write a conditional expression. Otherwise, you get an error. A compiler, it won't let, them let you do it. But a conditional expression is much faster than an if statement. If you write a conditional exp expression, it goes much faster. Okay, did I answer the question, hopefully? Um, my question was going to be, can we use else if with this statement. Yeah, it's I crazy. Guess. You can do it. It's very nuts if you want to do that. So, so we just put an extra colon in there? No, 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 no. You have to do it like this. So so now get ready to get confused. So that's condition one. Okay. Now I'm going to put over here whatever. That's my uh, if statement. Then in here I have to say condition two, whatever. Oh, in parentheses, two, okay. <clears throat> two, and then in here, this is the last one, last thing. And then put it over here. So essentially, you have to put a conditional expression in, in a place of another one. Oh, so if the first condition fails, then the second, the second condition gets activated. Outcome so is going to be a different condition. So as I mentioned, to, as I mentioned to Simmerge, any place you put an expression, you can put any other expression that I want, and I can have another condition in here. So I can have over here something like this: condition three, 
and then in here put whatever would that work though oh, because if your condition works, 2 works, is going to true works, oh yeah it, it work. works perfectly it works perfectly condition 2 is true so then it's going to check condition 3 so the first statement is going to be dependent on the yeah so again as you see this is a condition of its own and this is a condition of its own and that so first it checks this condition if it's true whatever happens if it's false condition 2 will be tested if the condition 2 is correct condition 3 would be tested if the condition 2 is not correct so it is confusing why do this when you want when you can write a simple nested f statement you follow right, and, um... in c++ you say can we do that 99% of the time the answer is yes but the thing is that why you do this only if you want to have an if else statement that is extremely fast but this is extremely difficult to debug extremely difficult to debug so my first thing don't do this don't do this but you can okay does that answer the question yeah yeah it does um i actually had one more question after listening to you on line 25 could we uh cast to a function let's say function two is still double and you didn't fix it earlier so uh could yes, we cast of course again can you 99 percent? yes so if it's a double then it has to be that perfect yeah but okay. if it's not castable then you can't do it okay thanks so if this cast is not valid it's gonna fail are we good yeah yeah all right so um, you again okay so i you... hope you can understand now how painful our last semester was <laughs> uh, uh no comment <laughs> okay so so uh so that's so 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 now we know okay so these are the things that and the reason that i can comfortably talk about this if this was the first time that we were talking about ipc 144 i wouldn't mention these things but because you have already went through it and you have problems, I can dig into it. So don't think low of your IPC 144 last semester, okay? Um, you just, sh I'm just filling the blanks. Let's put it that way. All right, next, let's go to the next one. Be quick, conditional expressions, holy schmoly. So these things, um, yeah, we, we went through it, flags, we talked about it. Avoid jumps. We know that. Yada yada yada. Exercise mm. style. I have a consistent style. Don't go bananas. Follow the guidelines. Um, I have one thing that I have to tell you. Ninety-nine percent, hundred percent of the time, when you got hired at some place to write code, you're not allowed to use your own style. So get ready to change your style based on the condition of the place that you are getting hired at. So any place you get hired at, they're going to give you a thousand page manual and this they say this is the way we write our code. You oh, put your curly bracket over here. You write the name of the variables as such. You create your modules like this. Every single place that you hired at, you have a different style. Guidelines, good. But hey, again, it all depends. Um, any questions about guidelines? So be so you you won't. Yeah, you you will never ever be able to set your own guideline unless you do a startup application and it's you writing a code and after that after you someone else is coming through, then you can actually decide what the style is gonna be. But if you're getting hired in IBM, you're never gonna be able to do that. Abdullah, you had a question. <clears throat> please, please use your microphone. Please, people, use your microphone. Okay? <clears throat> I would really appreciate it, but it's okay. All right. So, uh, thanks for responding. I, I'm happy that you're uh, responding to your polls. So, debugging, um, uh, it's something that I'm doing in the class every single time I'm teaching, so you know what it is. I'm not going to go through it. Uh, the only thing that I'm going to talk about is unit test. What is a unit test? A unit test is a simple main program you write for a module of your application and you test it just to see if it works properly or not. And you have to write many, many unit tests as you are going through. Those people who write the whole program and test it at the end, they are doomed never to be programmers ever. 
a programmer writes one play one thing as soon as it rates to a milestone that it can immediately write a unit test and test that and then goes to the next step it's uh, the next step always you, uh, create mains yes can you please clear about a little bit uh, about uh, this breakpoint testing oh oh okay so <clears throat> i'm just um, what i'm going to do over here i'm just going to show you what you see in here so when you are using ID, any type of ID, when the IDs work, you can. It's not only Visual Studio. You can use Eclipse if you use Xcode, if you use uh, CodeLight, if you use anything you use. The the IDEs mostly allow you to actually go through things. Why is it giving me a warning in here? Function not found. I have. A, I don't have a function in here. Oh, it was from the previous one, I think. Yeah, okay. So to go through your code, look at the debug menu and that shows you exactly how things work. So if you press F5, it runs under debugging, which means you can stop it at wherever you want. When you press F5, it runs and stops at that execution so you can actually continue debugging after that. So breakpoints allow you to run and stop at certain thing. I bring the mouse and I click and I press F5 again. It runs that and stops at the next one. That's F5. That's breakpoints. And you can remove breakpoints by clicking again and press F5 and it ends and stands at the end. Number two, debugging step by step. You can break, put a breakpoint and stop or just start from the beginning which is this step into step over f10 steps over which means if i have a loop like this and i have it in a function so i'm going to actually put this one put these two in a function copy int foo int cnt so i actually put those things in a function and I'm going to call the function in here. I'm going to say over here, foo. Oh, let's do it after. <coughs> so this is for loop. Oh, I already copied this over there first. Body, yada, yada, yada. So I'm going to remove all this. First, I'm going to do this. Then I'm going to call foo in here. So as you see now, I have a function that is being called. I'm pressing F10. F10 means step over. But essentially, or F11, it doesn't make any difference. Step into If you press F10 or F11, it starts and stops at the very first part after compilation. I had error. Let me fix my error. Uh, foo must return a value because I said int foo, my mistake. I'm going to do a void now. So I stop again. F10 again. I run it again. Now it stops at main, as you see, with an arrow over there. Now it goes CNT. So I bring my mouse over there. It shows that it's garbage. It makes CNT zero and starts and it keeps going. So I'm pressing F10 and it keeps going. If I press F11, if you have installed the source code for standard input output and everything, if I press F11, it actually goes inside printf and runs that. I don't have that installed, so it doesn't go inside. But if I had the source inside and I press F11, it would go into standard input output and walk through F printf, but it did not because it doesn't have it. So now I'm doing, I keep doing this and it's fine. I want to run up to foo. I'm going to put the breakpoint in here. Now I press F5, which is essentially continue. I press F5. It goes stop at the breakpoint. Now I want to go inside the function. If I press F10, it jumps over the function. If I press F11, it goes inside the function. So I'm going pressing F11. Now it goes inside foo. And it's running foo. I'm pressing F10 over and over, and it's running as it's going through. Now I know the function is working properly. I want to run the whole function and get out of here. If you want to do that, again, press on debug. Step out is Shift F11. I'm holding Shift, pressing F11. It runs the whole thing, goes out, and goes to return zero, and that's the end. So click on the debug and look at all the. Uh, uh, options that you have for debugging and that's what you can do so please try it and see how it works and that's how debugging works with visual studio in a very quick 
and sweet and easy way. Any questions down to here? All right. Arrays. Arrays of series of variables created back to back that either are identified by their index that starts from zero. So let me just put this well, we already ah, there's nothing in here, so I'm just gonna remove that. <coughs> so an array. What uh, let me actually see if I have something in my IPC one four four. Do I have IPC one four four? Notes archive. Yeah, that's my old ones. Yeah, these are my archives. Let me just see if I have over here any sorting pointers, 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 pointers and arrays. So I have some slides from old times that I'm going to bring it up afterwards and use it. All right. I thought I have something with arrays I, and I don't and I'm going to explain later. Okay. So <clears throat> when you're doing an array, when you're saying in, when you're saying integer a and you put some number in here, that means you want 10 integers and you want a to point to the beginning of them. That's what happens. That's what an array is. And arrays are in like the literally creates 10 integers and the name of integers starts from index 0, a0 zero, and it goes right up to index uh, index 9 that is one less than that so a9 that's an array so if I want to actually show the array and initialize the array to values I have to set it to values like this so I can go over here 10 20 30 40 50 when I do like that index 0 will be set so this is gonna be index 0 this is going to be index 1, this is going to be index 2, this is going to be index 3, this is going to be index 4, and whatever is left will be automatically, all the bits in it will be set to null, no matter what type of array you have. So it's going to be completely nullified, which essentially means if I go for, if I create an integer i, and I go for i set to 0, i less than 10, and i++, plus plus, and I print all the values separately, so I go printf percent %d space, and I put over here ai. I go through them one by one. Essentially, what it's going to do, it's going to print zero for all the stuff that I had at the end, and that's an essence of an array. So that's what you see, one, two, three, four, five, and everything at the end becomes zero. So anything you have over there will be set to zero, which is a good thing, because if I want to set whole bunch of things to zero. So if I have 100 integers over here and I want to set them to zero, just put an empty curly bracket in front of it, which essentially means I want it to set to something, but I'm not so essentially it sets everything to zero. Therefore, if I go write the exact same for loop in here and I, ha and I go up to 100, you will see that all the values inside, they're all, whoa, What did I do? Oh. Oh, I'm going to A. Sorry, this is B. <laughs> yeah, that's better. Okay, so one more time. There you go. So as you see, all the hundred things that you have, they're all zeros. Whatever it's in there, they're all zero. Uh, so that's that. So that's your, uh, uh, that's your array, and that's how you create an array. And arrays are nothing but variables. Anything you did to I, you can do to I A1. A5, A3, A2, you just have to make sure you're not going out. Now we were talking about segmentation fault. If you write over here A10, it's a very possible segmentation fault. If you write B100, it's a very possible ex ex uh, segmentation fault because you're out of your memory. Remember, 10 fingers starts from 0, goes up to 9. I don't have a finger number 10. I have finger number 0 up to finger number 10. Ten, 9, no 10. The same thing with the index of uh, uh, arrays. They start from uh, uh, 0, go up to uh, uh, the index minus 1. Are we okay with what arrays are? Uh, 
I haven't talked about passing to functions and stuff. We'll talk about that soon. Okay, Partham, go. What's uh, what's the question? Uh, sorry, I just clicked the button. Oh, okay. So it's a yes. Okay. All right. And the rest are not responding. So I'm hoping that everybody's okay. So, so, so that's, that's an array um, and how the arrays work and everything's good. So um, if I want to actually pass an array to a function, I need to understand how an array is actually or is set in memory. So an array in memory is actually set like this, ladies and gentlemen, it is not set as what you think so essentially uh, when you create an array oh no it's black we don't want that that's interesting okay didn't work so when you create an array let me just see clear all there you go when you create an array in memory, uh, like if I say integer A5, so if somewhere in my code I have uh, something like this, so if I have, let me just put this one over here, 13 array 1.cpp, okay? So if I have something like this in my code, let's say I have I'm going to put a small thing so I can show you an example. If I have integer A3, that means I want three integers. And because I, I, I want three integers, what I, what I need to do in here is to separate this. Uh, so, uh, so when I actually say integer A3, compiler will add, uh, ask operating system to designate a place for my three integers. And the compiler will actually get something like that and you're going to have three integers set over there. Now, be aware these three, like when I put over here three, these one are actually four bytes each. It's not uh, single bytes. So essentially, I have one, it's, it's, it's like this, one, two, three, four. I'm, gonna, I'm not going to write that, but just keep, bear that in mind. So essentially, this is, becomes index zero, this becomes index one, and this becomes index two. And that's what my function, my my arrays are. But what happens in reality is that actually the compiler will have another thing that later on we're going to find out what does that mean. What is that? It's going to have another thing that the name of the array is in there, and that is actually your a. Oh, and that actually is your a in here. And a knows where that one, two, three is. So when you say A, so essentially if this address over here in memory, let's say your array is starting at in, at in address, um, let's put a number in here. So let's say this is the address of the memory that you are in. Okay, so this is the address of memory. I'm just going to use the two right digits, seven, zero. I'm not going to put, actually, let's put the whole thing in here. Um, yeah, I'm going to just put, put the seven, zero in here, but just assume that know that we have a big number and it starts right from the beginning so if you have something like that you in your uh, in uh, what should I call it in uh, uh, C language does like this it actually the address that you have over there actually goes over here so one two three four five six seven zero goes inside a so a knows where it is and when you say a zero it means from this address goes zero further and therefore, when you say a1, it adds 1 to this value. And we know when we are dealing with address, 1 means the size of integer. It means 4 further. So a1 becomes 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 4. a2 becomes 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So essentially, this becomes 7, 4. And this becomes 7, 8. Of course, all the preceding numbers are there. So when you say A0, it's this one. A1 is that one. A2 is that one. And that's how it happens behind the scene. Because of this fact, 
when you are writing a function if you want to pass the array into a function what you need to do is to do something like this so essentially you write for example I want to display these three integers let's say I have the values in here say <coughs> 10 uh, 20 and 30 so let's say I have these three values in here which means essentially inside this thing I have the values uh, so in here I'm gonna have uh, in here I'm gonna have 10 in here I'm gonna have 20 and in here I'm gonna have 30 and that's what happens so if I actually wanted to do something like this if I want to actually print these values so I write a function I'm gonna write over here int uh, print ints in here if I want to pass this array to this function I cannot pass the whole three of them what I'm gonna do I'm gonna write an array in here with no body so I'm gonna say integer let's say B and I'm gonna leave it empty and because C language and by general rule of, rule of C language C language is never aware of what is the size of an array I have to pass another thing over here as size to the function therefore my function knows how many arrays I have when you write something like this what happens is that compiler creates an array somewhere in memory and calls that array B so essentially this will be called B but this array is like a snake that has a head with no body this B is an array but it doesn't have a body therefore when you in here you say int sorry it's you say foo B and 3 when you actually call it like that you call, sorry not foo print ints prn ints B and 3 when you do something like this oh, sorry A and 3 and you do something like this you are passing what you have inside this you are passing what you have inside this A so you essentially pass what you have inside this A and you get it and you put that one in B therefore your B literally will be one two three four five six seven zero and therefore that will point to the same location in memory as A did and because of that it looks like B is an array in print ints function but it's essentially sharing the same body as A that's why if you change an array inside the function the target array changes so now in here if I say if I say something like uh, int i and I say for i set to 0 i less than size and i plus plus I can actually print <coughs> the values inside b so I'm gonna say printf percent d and in here I'm gonna put b i and because b i and a i are pointing to the same place life is beautiful it's gonna actually print it as if it all belongs to its own and therefore you can access all the stuff that you have in the array uh, in another function as easy as you can see in here so I'm gonna go to no line in here so if I run the function essentially this is what happens I'm pressing F10 now build errors what is the error it says print ints must return I keep putting int over there void I don't need to return anything so 10 now I'm gonna come over here so as you see a is now it actually shows me they're all like this and as soon as I pass the initiation you will see that they are all now 10 to 23 but in main it knows the array has the length of 3 but as soon as it goes to print int it becomes a mystery to it if you go to B it has no idea how many and that's why you have to pass the size to it now I'm gonna say over here print a 0 10 is gonna get printed goes back up so it's still less than size print the B that one and then it keeps going like that 
and prints new line and it goes out. So the values are passed out and everything is uh, set properly and now an array is actually passed to a function. Do we understand how arrays are passed to functions now? Come on, don't be shy. Respond to the poll, please. All right. The rest are sleeping or they don't have a poll or they're driving or something. All right. So, uh, okay. Navprit, tell me. Professor? Yes. Mm -hmm. Can you please uh, repeat it once time? And because uh, it's hard to misunderstand, uh, please once again. Okay, A holds the location of the array. The variable A holds the location of the 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 integers that you have. Are we okay with that? Do we understand that? Yes, professor. Yes. Okay, when you are calling a function, you need to gain access to that array. Again, it goes back to the example that I said, I think, in, in OP244 class a few days ago. And I, and I say, why we are using this? I would say, which one you prefer if I'm coming? If you want to invite me for dinner, it's easier for me to give me the address of your house or build another house for me and bring me to it. And you said the address of the house. Remember that? Yes. It's the exact same thing in here. Because an array is essentially humongous amount of variables pointed by an address, it's easier to pass the address to another function. So the function can go to the array instead of sending the array to the function. And therefore, that's what we are doing in here. So we are creating another array that doesn't have a body. And I'm going to say, use the body of A for now. And therefore, B will point to where A is pointing. And whatever I do to B, it's as if I'm doing to A. And therefore, it creates the illusion that the array is passed to the function, but where is actually being passed to the function is the location of the array, but not the array itself. Are we okay with this? Okay, means the only the address will be passed over there. One more time. Means the when we pass the uh, uh, means like uh, when we call the function pass int a comma three, uh, the address of the a will be passed. Exactly, not address of the a. A holds the address of the array. Address of array. Okay. So A is actually a variable that holds okay. the address of the array. And later on, we'll find out we call that a pointer. <laughs> so when okay. you are using an array, you're actually using a pointer and you're not aware of it. Okay. So essentially, array A is a variable that, can, that holds the address of where those arrays are in the memory. That, that, that the operating system gave us. And to be able to give access to all of them to another function, instead of sending all of them in the function, I just send where they are and the function can access it. Okay. Essentially, okay. an array is using pointers behind the scene without you knowing it. Okay? Means it's just like a pointer. It's not just like a pointer. It is a pointer. Means it, it is a okay. pointer. Well, God, when we talk about pointers, we're on the side, but this is the array notation for it. Now, just to show you, okay, can, uh, just to show you one call thing, by value. Give me can you seconds. go through call by value and call by no, address? no, 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 that's for the pointers. Give me a second, we'll come to it. Okay, um, okay. I just want to teach arrays now. When we come to pointers, then we're going to come back here. So, in here, I'm going to okay. add, I'm going to call it add 10, okay. And in here, I'm going to do the exact same thing, int b, and I'm going to write over here int size. So I'm going to do the exact same thing I did in, in the other function. The only difference is that instead of printing them, I'm going to add 10 to each element. So in here, or let's, I'm going to 10, I'm going to say add 11. <laughs> the reason that I'm doing it is that I just want to, uh, I want, I want it to be properly visible. So in here, instead of printing out, I'm going to add 11 to each element. So I'm going to say plus equal 11. Okay. So now if I actually call the function add 11 beforehand, add 11, and I'm going to put A in here. And of course, I'm going to put three. 
when I call the function, this completely demonstrates uh, and, and verifies what I'm saying. So when I actually run the function, at 11 passes A to the function at 11. So B is actually now pointing to where A is. And it's going to keep adding 11 to every and each of the values. And that's why when I get out, and as you see, when I get out of here, a now has 11 more in every and each variable. And when I actually print them, I'm going to press F10 now. When I press F10, it jumps through all of it. It's not going to go inside. As soon as I do that, you see 21, 31, and 41 is printed, which essentially changed it. Now, to make sure that we do not hurt ourselves, we do not cause trouble, to ourselves, we always have to enforce our logic when we are passing a function, uh, an array to a function. If our logic says, I just want to print this, I don't want to change the values, make sure you always make it a constant integer. Constant integer array means it is an array, but I can't change it. So if by mistake over here you go plus equal one for any reason, it's not going to let you, it's going to tell you expression must be a modifiable value. So essentially, a const in front of the array's name, it's going to defend you against your worst enemy. And your, your worst enemy is you and your bad habits. So if you put a const over there, you just guarantee that you're not going to change it because the logic dictates it. Of course, when I'm adding 11 to the array, I shouldn't make it a constant because I want to change it. Now, if I run it, you'll see that it works perfectly up as before with absolutely no problem. As you see, I have the values, but I wrote a safe code that I will not make a mistake in my function that is not supposed to change the array. So this is essentially passing the array to a function and using the function to either modify an array or print it without modification. Are we okay with this? Does it work same for the character? That question is like, I want to scream and say yes. Okay. I want to scream out of my lungs with my eyes popping out and <clears throat> say yes. It, when you, when I say an array, it could be an array of character, an array of doubles, an array of integers, an array of cars, an array of students, an array of buildings, an array of computers, an array of struct. Any array that is passed does like this, not an array of characters. Any array. Okay? So I hope that I made myself clear on that. Mahrok, you said no. What's going on? Uh, I think I kind of uh, mixed it up with reference. Yeah, 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 yeah. Backspace, <laughs> delete. We are in IPC 144. What the heck is a reference? Forget about okay. that. You don't know what a reference is. Just wipe out reference out of your mind. Come back to OP244 and ask about it. For now, you don't even know such a thing exists. Okay? Just forget hey, about uh, reference. Sorry, just a quick question. Yes, go ahead. Uh, so before I was taught to, like allocate memory for an array using malloc but i never understood the difference between that and like what we're doing here okay um denny talk to me separately so i'll tell you what is malloc alloc calloc free okay, and all those good. stuff okay it's bringing this up is uh adding unnecessary complexity to people who already have problem with the race <laughs> okay if you want to know what malloc alloc and all those stuff us i'll gladly tell you but not here okay Okay, sounds good. All right. Uh, Marok, are we okay? Did you wipe out that reference out of your brain? Yes. <laughs> Thank you. All right, let's go back. All right, so this is arrays in a nutshell and how they work. It doesn't matter what I have. It is the same thing that it works. So just to show you, uh, like, as, as characters, how does it work, I'm just going to write. So this is going to be an integer array. So I'm going to write over here. Um, um, let's actually, yeah. I'm going to do like this. So <clears throat> in here, I'm going to so void PRN cares. <clears throat> Constant <clears throat> character C. And in here, I'm going to say in size. And in here, I'm going to say void next care. <clears throat> next cares. 
and I'm going to put character C size int size actually let me put this in a separate file I don't want to clutter this one too much um, let me save this uh, 14 I'm gonna call it array 1 uh, array 2 again these are all C there is no C++ here I'm just doing it in C++ for the heck of it so now let's actually remove this I'm gonna do it like this print cares and size so in here instead of int I'm gonna have care and in here I'm gonna have a B and C and just to remind you what characters are, I'm gonna put 65 here okay just for you to know uh, they are not there are no characters these are integers okay so print cares I'm gonna do the exact same thing that I've done in the other one <coughs> for integer uh, for I set to 0 I less than size <coughs> I plus plus and I'm gonna say printf percent C and and in here I'm gonna put CI printf backslash n go to new line and I'm doing the exact same thing in here <coughs> and this one I'm gonna add 1 instead of add 10 just for us to see what what's gonna happen over here so I'm gonna say plus plus <coughs> So in here I'm going to say PR and cares and in here I'm going to say add one I th add next cares and next cares and I'm going to actually print the characters afterwards too so that's that one so I'll print it so what happens over here is exactly the same absolutely no difference so when I'm going to come over here and run it first I have garbage in there as soon as it get initialized then as you see now I have three values a 65 B 66 C 67 you see I put 65 over there on purpose whoops wrong button now I'm gonna go inside the first function one by one they're gonna <coughs> get printed over there a B C and goes to new line now I'm gonna go to next cares in next cares it's gonna add one to the ASCII code which is the integer and comes back out and prints them all and I have BCD are we okay with this um not exactly related to this 100% but just looking at this I got a question about memory allocation um if you don't mind okay um so we an int is takes four bytes in the memory, whereas yes. char takes one. But yeah. we can store a number in a char, and it'll still st still take one byte, right? Yeah, but that number cannot be more than two hundred and one hundred and twenty-eight, twenty-seven. Right. But when you have an integer, you can go up to one billion. <clears throat> so, if we were to calculate a simple math, or not, uh, sorry, if we were to code a simple calculator that's only going to add numbers that are less than 100 could we use chars for you, that you should choose cars do you actually using uh, less memory like that right okay it's it's just we you, did something not, like it's that, not that you, we could you should right because in the first semester i remember we did like a simple calculations and we used int anyway which yeah makes I sense because... i know i know because they want to teach you that int is an int the reason they call this thing care has nothing to do with this one being a character it was the fact that it's big enough to be able to hold the ASCII code of a character. Right, of course. Yeah. It's just it's, an um, It's just an and, That's what okay, I want to put emphasis sense. on. Like people think like characters are characters. They're not. They're just suitable to hold an integer that is as big as 255. That's it. Okay. I, I missed the uh, beginning of the lecture. So I just, oh, yeah, I okay, was curious. Okay, Thanks. Okay. So, so Simmer, just, you had problem. Go me. Tell me. Yeah, in, in, in first execution, you were like it was showing like A65, B65, and C65, you said. So I'm a little confused about that, how we got A65, B65, and C65. No, there were 66 and 67. You didn't look closely. 
Uh, can you please run it again and well, just let just me show it to you right button. now? D66, C67, D68. Actually, it's so small, I cannot see that. Oh, okay. So, it's like, sorry, I can't do that. I can't, like, uh, it yeah, can't get bigger, bigger than this. <laughs> that, that font, I cannot change my so Why it is taking 65 along? One more time. Oh, okay. Why did I so, put 65 here? Yeah. No, Just no, to how... show you 65 is 8. <laughs> Just for but you to how, know. How it is taking 65 with B and T also? Because the ASCII code of B is, it doesn't get 65. Oh, it's 66. You mean this is oh okay. This is 67. This is the next ASCII code. Yeah, got it now. Got it now. Was a little bit confusing. <laughs> a bit. I was thinking how it like, comes with just, the number. The reason that I'm doing this is to take you out of IPC 144 and makes your uh, uh, brain go beyond the concept of a character and just look at it as a small integer. That's all. Thank you so much. Thank you so much because I must say it's kind of dilemma for us now. Oh, okay, just, it's not. So, care. So now I'm gonna go now the string that everybody talks about. Let's see how that works. So this is a character array. So I'm gonna put. Uh, I'm gonna. I'm not gonna call it actually. What is? I'm just gonna say array three over here. The CPP, and I'm gonna go to next step to just show you what we call a string. Why we call it a string. So essentially. Because it was difficult, if I wanted to put fardad in here, I have to put single code, comma, single code, comma, single. Instead of doing that, so essentially, if I want to convert this to a string, I have to follow a standard. So first of all, I don't need the size because I have a stop sign at the end. Okay, and I don't need to check the size. I only need to see if CI is null or not. That's all. So not I all I have to do is this. I don't even put a condition in here. I do that. Because I know any number other than zero is true, zero is false, correct? So if I want to do that, so instead of print cares, I'm gonna call it a print str now. C S T R. Okay? So now I'm printing a C string and next cares, it's gonna be next care. I'm gonna call it in C S T R. CSTR. So now what I'm going to do in here is this. I'm going to remove the size and the condition over here to stop for me is for that C to actually see C to actually have an ASCII code other than zero. And it, it's going to keep going. So now if I look at it, I'm going I'm going to have to make this one four. And if you do you mind if I I'm going to ask, is it OK if I remove this uh, illustration from here? Can I remove it? Just remember that in your mind when I'm when I'm actually writing. the So I'm going to remove that clear all. OK, so now. So now uh, so one person so said no, Rocky, I'm sorry, I wiped it out. Uh, my apologies. It's gone. Oh, no, 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 good. I did. I just had a, a question real quick. Go ahead. Oh, actually, um, I so, There you go. <laughs> Came back. So w when you're printing, um, uh, like, the ASCII code, like, how do you specify between printing the number and the actual letter? You are telling to printf which one to print. If you tell to printf, I want the character shape, printer is going to print the character shape. If you want the ASCII code, you put percent %d. It puts the, it gives you the, the number. Okay, but so, when it's processing stuff in the back end using this character, it's always using the number? Yeah, there is. That's the thing. This is what I want to say. There is no character. Character is just a shape saved in your graphic card and assigned to that ASCII code. So when you are saying percent %c, you are asking printf to show the shape of the character with code 65. That's all. Okay, there that is, makes sense. That's there perfect. is no character. We don't have such a thing as character in C language. And that's how I start my IPC 144. We don't we don't have any C language is a low level language. There is no characters in it. Mm -hmm. Everything that you want it to be character, you have to ask it to show and you have to do it in a function. C doesn't know there is a character. It's printf that somebody wrote that shows the shape. All right. Okay, okay, makes sense. Thank okay. you. All right. So let's just clear all again and go back. So now in here, I'm going to actually say uh, PRN CSDR, and I don't need to show this one anymore. And in here, I'm going to say, 
of CSDR. And in here going to be next uh, characters in string and PRN CSDR again. And I'm going to remove the... Now, now take a look. If you recall, I told you if the number of initializations is less than the array, the rest will be zero. Do you remember that? So essentially, A3 will be zero automatically when I have shorter number of initializations here. So now when I run the program, all it does, it goes in here, it receives the value, and it says, is C Z0, if CI uh, is CI 0? No, it's A, so it keeps going. Is it 0? No. So as you see, is it 0? No, it prints. And now it says it's 0, stop, it comes out. So it becomes false and goes out. Now it says next characters in CR. So we go up again. Now it says, is it 0? No, it comes here, adds 1 to it. Is it 0? No, it comes here, adds 1 to it. Is it 0? No, it comes here. Is it 0? Yes, so it becomes false, goes out. And now I have uh, BCD printed over there. Now, because this is too complicated to write something like this, they created another notation for it. They said when you are doing like this, if you are actually want, want to deal with C strings, we'll, we created another literal value for it. So you put the A4, but instead of writing it like that, write it like this, ABC. So essentially, this ABC of yours is nothing but this. It's exactly that. And if I wanted to put 65 over there, I had to actually put over here 65, <laughs> which I don't want to do that. So I'm just going to put over here A instead. Now, uh -huh. if I actually print it, it works the exact same way and asks to see A, B, C, D comes up. Are we okay uh, with this? I have, I have a question. Yes, go ahead. I don't understand when it checks if it's zero or not. Okay, what is true in C language? Answer, please. What is true in C language? One. No. Anything but zero. Is that okay? Do we understand yeah. what true is? Yeah. What is false in C language? Zero. No, you have to say only zero. Only zero. Is that correct? So, when for loop comes here and has a condition, it checks the condition. It wants to see if it's true or false. C doesn't understand what is the meaning of a condition. It just checks the value to see if it's zero or not. Mm -hmm. If it's not, it's true. It continues. When it's zero, it's false. It stops. Of so course, of would course it would be better to say, of, like, it would be more descriptive. And not, if you write it like this, then everybody knows you understand what C language is. But if you like it, write it like this, not equal to zero, they know you're a rookie. Uh -huh. Because nobody wants to print extra stuff, type extra stuff. Why do I put four, three, four more characters when I know it's going to be zero and it's going to be false? You write this, it means I just started C language. You write this, it means I know what conditions are in C. Okay, thank you. Got it? So I'm going to actually write that and comment it so we know what are we dealing with here. So in here, I'm going to say not equal to zero and comment it. Got it? Yes, thank right. you. No problem. So that's exactly what I want to do. And I want everybody to actually interrupt me if they don't understand it, okay? This is good. So just to show you what this really is, this ABC is, just to show you that this is just an array of characters and nothing else, I'm going to show you another thing. So this is, I'm going to put call it array 16, array for the CPP. Again, this is all C. There is nothing CPP about this. I keep saying that so you know. Okay, now see what I'm going to do in here. I'm just going to write a piece of code over here and you'll see what do I mean. So first of all, can anybody tell me what this function do now? What am I doing? You're printing a single char. A single character. Okay, now take a look at this. So what is the output of this program? Uh, one single character, whatever you define, then AB. No, it's, it's got to be index two of this array. 
zero one two so c is going to get printed take a look oh um, okay so what you see as a literal value over here is nothing but a c string an array of characters that is null terminated are we okay with this do, do we understand what it is are we okay with this all right okay good good we are going somewhere so so uh all right So it's going to be 17 array, and I'm out of arrays. Going to see what else is the what else is new over here. We want to go go through. Uh, if you want me to stop, let me know. So I'm not going to go through array, array initialization, all the things we talked about, syntax, exercise, structures. Okay, uh, guys, uh, I know this session is taking long, but this is what we have to do. So again, we're going to have another 10 minutes break. Are we okay with this? Can I take another break? 10 minutes break, please. I was just curious how long you were going for because we I have, have no idea. I wanted to be out oh, you have 10 to keep under 24 I mean, hours. yeah, I'm, here, I'm happy to go for like 24 hours myself, like actually learning stuff I, I, all day. <laughs> I see that's the thing. I wanted to, I wanted to be done at 10 and go play with my daughter, but this <laughs> questions are coming up, right? So I have to, I have to continue, and and I need to take a break every now and then. So, is there any idea, like uh, still how much time it's gonna take? Because I, I don't I know, had my to dear. If you don't ask me. If you if I say I know this I know this it's gonna finish in five minutes. <laughs> yeah, but if you because tell me honestly, I don't know this, then I have to explain. Yeah, honestly, I don't want to miss it. But, um... Guys, you want you want me to do the rest in next week? Let me yeah, ask. Let me let me see. Do you want me to continue this next week? Uh both is okay, honestly. Oh, lots of people are saying yes. Okay, good. So we're gonna stop sure. as, as we are right now, and, and it is, and it keeps going up. And if you are not from my section, okay, if it, uh, let me just uh, actually let me just give me a second. So if two people said no, but uh, like uh, I'm gonna show you exactly how many people are saying yes. Continue next semester, next, next semester, <laughs> next week. So you'll see what I so, so you can see the majority. This is this is the number of people. Ninety one percent are saying. Let's do it next week. So we're gonna do it next yeah, week. I think that will be too much for a day. Other, I, other yeah, that, that, frankly, I know that. And and yeah. and your short-term memory has, it's we are computers. Our short-term memory, our caches are very small, and we have to digest that. So, um, I have a question: uh, How many people over here are from other sections than mine? What is other section? Okay, beautiful. You, I mean, they mean like they are, I am not their teacher. I'm not their professor. If if I'm not your professor, say yes. Okay. So what I want you to do, um, if you don't want us to fall behind next week, first of all, again, tell to your friends that such a thing exists, and we're gonna, we are having a review session next week too at eight o'clock in the morning. First of all, let them know, and second tell them to watch the video because I'm going to post the video right underneath so uh, the recording is going to come up right underneath uh, and I'm going to actually put it in a YouTube video and say review of IPC 144 and I'm going to put it over there too so uh, what I want you to do let them know if they want to come first of all let them know that if they are welcome to come the more people come we're going to have better outcomes in all OP 244 so let them know they can come uh, and, and take part and secondly please tell them to watch the first video before they come because no way I'm gonna go back and review anything from pre previous I'm gonna start from structure and, and fly through okay so where's this gonna be posted the video uh, the video so... is gonna be right underneath where you clicked and you joined it's gonna be there and I'm gonna create a YouTube uh, Playlist, call it IPC one four four review, and I put it in that one too. So Amazing. Do share a if you if you Google it, you're gonna find it. Yes, part part of me. I said, please do share a link once you upload it. Uh, that's the thing. It, it the thing is that it takes time for it to process. As soon as yeah, it processes, I got it. Yeah, yeah thank you. It, the share is gonna uh, that that it's gonna go there. Thank you very for all those people who actually came in. I I really appreciate it, and uh, and and please let's tell your friends. Um, your your uh, your classmates to join. No, we appreciate you. Okay. No problem. <laughs> yes. No problem. If I'm, if, I'm, if I'm doing something positive, that's good. If I'm doing something positive. Hello, sir. Okay. Uh, anybody has any question before we call it a day? 
sorry professor oh. i have one question oh. in a, on a teams uh, related to the dipart uh, can uh, can you please uh, reply over there uh, you have you uh, one more uh, you have a question where mm -hmm. Related to the die part of the uh, uh, workshop, uh, it's just uh, one question. Can we do changes in a tester program, uh, tester file? No, uh, the tester file, I'm going to change it back to my own. You can make a change to test your program, of course. But be aware what you're going to be tested on is what you see now. Of course, change it. You can comment pieces so you can test one by one, have smaller unit test. But at the end, you're going to be tested against this. Okay. Okay. Uh, okay. All right. So, uh, and, and hello, so, professor. Yes. Uh, yes. Uh, I just want to request you one thing that uh, uh, can you post uh, the recordings of the OOP lectures that uh, of that means of this semester for my of my own. Yes, sir. Oh, they are all posted. I post them all. The list are all gonna come on. The, let me show you. Uh, give me a second. My daughter is calling. Just give me a second. Hello. Hello? Hello, my love. What's up? So if you go to uh, OOP244 repository, like organization on GitHub, you see over here it says OOP244 NAB notes. So what I will do, all the old uh, uh, things go over here. And this is the active session that you can join my lecture if you want to. So first of all, anybody's free to join. No problem. Secondly, the recordings are all posted over here for my sections one by one as soon as they become available I'll put it on and if you see it's not available let me know and I will put it on if I forget like for, I forget to put the last one so I'm gonna add it over here it's it's in all my things OP345, OP244, IPC anything to do you can uh, probably find my IPC lectures from years ago just Google on in YouTube IPC144 for that and uh, it's gonna come up okay so, Professor, in this active session, that means uh, the lectures you take twice a week. We when can I say join active session, session, take a look at here. You see it says OOP244. At this time, when you click on that, you're going to join this class. Oh, wonderful. So yeah. you see what Thank is the much, schedule Professor. and you see yeah. what is the thing. But again, when you are coming in, you have to put your full name, full Seneca name. That I'm obsessed with. And please come in with a microphone. Do not come listen only. I hate that. All right, uh, so that's it. Um, it's uh, day, and now uh, I'll see you eight o'clock next next Sunday. Thank you very much, Professor. Right, Ciao, everyone. Have yourself a beautiful weekend. Thank you. Bye. 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 Thank Bye. you. No problem. Bye. Bye, everyone. <laughs>